Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Our text for today is the Gospel just read, taken from St. Luke chapter 11 on the Lord's Prayer. Abraham had some gall, didn't he? He's standing before the Lord, so to speak. Sodom and Gomorrah are before them, these ancient sinful cities. And Abraham decides that he is going to negotiate with God to save the city. How about 50? If there are 50 righteous people, surely you would save these cities. Well, you're not going to just throw this all away because of 10 people. What if there are only 40? What if there are 30, 20, 14, 12, 11? What if there are just 10 people? On and on, Abraham goes negotiating with God. And yet, when we describe Abraham, we don't usually say, oh man, Abraham, now that was a guy that knew how to pray. Usually we say Abraham was a man of great faith. Why? Because he trusted in the mercy of God so much that he was willing to try to ferret that mercy out even when it was hidden so very deep. God, you see, loves to hear our prayers. He really does. He is our Heavenly Father, and there is nothing He loves more than to converse with His children. Our Catechism speaks about it this way. With these words, God tenderly invites us to believe that He is our true Father, and that we are His true children, so that with all boldness and confidence we may ask Him as dear children ask their dear Father. But why is it that we are so timid, so hesitant and halting in our prayers. That description that Luther just gave us sounds like he was talking about Abraham. But the prayers that we offer up so much are, well, they are a poor second place. You would think that when we go to prayer, it is like we are going to a mean judge who will only grudgingly give us what we need if he is forced to do so. But that's not the God of the Bible. The answer, of course, to why our prayers are so timid and hesitant is unbelief. We are hesitant in prayer because we are hesitant in faith. Faith means having confidence that God loves you, wants what is best for you, and longs to be with you for all eternity. But in the midst of all of our trials and struggles, the hardships of this life, the uncertainties of the future, in the midst of all of that, it is easy, only too easy, to wonder if God is really on our side. I mean, come on. Look at the politics in our country. Look at the terror attacks that seem to come every day. Look at the pains and sorrows of this world and death that seems to lurk around every corner. With all of this going on, is it any wonder that we question or doubt whether God is really on our side? That is why Jesus teaches his disciples to pray. Jesus teaches them the prayer, his prayer, because they and we need to be trained in holy conversation. Like a child that is learning how to talk, we need the words given to us. They have to be given. Spoon-fed to us like a patient mother giving creamed asparagus to her child. <laughs> Perhaps that is a poor analogy. You see, though, prayer 
is a holy conversation God starts in his word. And it is that word he delivers to you now, today, in these great words we call the Lord's Prayer. Faith, the will and name of God, our daily bread, forgiveness, temptation, deliverance from evil, these are the themes and conversations we are to have with our Heavenly Father every day, not just when they pop into our head. But you need to learn them. Again and again, if you need to learn them. We are forgetful, timid, fearful that God has changed his mind somehow about you and his great love for you. That is why possibly the most comforting words in the Lord's Prayer are the very beginning ones. Our Father. In that word, our, all of Jesus' life and work is summed up. He binds himself so tightly to your needs, your wants, your fears and troubles, that they are now his, and he bears them to the Father. God hears your prayers because they are wrapped up in Jesus' own prayers and words. It is impossible to pray alone. Jesus is always speaking with you, for you. And that's why you need not be afraid of going to your Father for all things. He knows. He longs to be with you. He longs to give you his word of Jesus Christ. One ancient pastor said, so be urgent in prayer. Draw near to God who loves to be kind. That is the God of the Bible. That is the God who loves you, that he gave his only son to die so that you might live. That is the God who longs to be in holy conversation with you, not just every so often, but all the time. That is the God who teaches you the words of faith. And when your faith is weak, when your strength seems waning, when you are timid and fearful, Jesus then 